let's start recording now because we might as well get some content out of this yeah. so what's up guys what's up what's up this is the start what's of up? a new podcast for fantasy football and chill i'm austin i'll pass this along the line to Cade if you'd like to introduce yourself and then we'll move what? around introducing ourselves uh what's up i'm Cade. um i'm excited for this podcast I'm Jason, big Packer fan, along with Josh down there. Also excited. Oh, yeah, and my mic's all fucked up. <laughs> Just a little bit. I can't hear it, but they can. Yeah, you will too. <laughs> uh, I'm Josh. Um, I'm also, of course, a Packers fan, and I'm excited for this podcast, too. My name's Alex. Um, big time uh, Browns fan, you know. Just love being hurt mentally, emotionally. Nice. Good for Fo- you. Following that up, I'm a Bears fan too, so I'm in the same boat. I love watching disappointment every single year. But uh, I mean, we're gonna not start- every single year. Uh, a good majority. But we'll start off with a, a little introduction for the background, since everybody loves to make fun of. Yeah, we got to know what this so, is about, bro. So if you look at the setup right over here. To give you guys a brief introduction on what I moved into. So, my stepsisters both rode horses growing up. And so, naturally, they're going to be surrounded with a bunch of stuffed animals being horses. And so, I happen to be sitting at one of their desks down in the basement. That happens, I mean, you can look in the background. There's a photo of horses. It's scattered all around. But yes, I happen to be sitting at a desk. Bro, I didn't even realize that horse picture was there, bro. Yeah. It's big horse people. Yeah. Big horse people. I mean, I respect it. That makes sense, though. So I'm glad we got some clarity there. But yeah, so we're just a group. I'll go a little more in depth. Uh, I'm 21. I go to Ohio State. You already know that I'm a Bears fan, but we all, all of us are fantasy football players. We love we got all of our own i mean we're all in a bunch of leagues separate to our knowledge too and many so yeah too many some would say but we're here to spread some knowledge and kind of just chop shit and enjoy it so i hope you guys are excited and i hope uh, we're able to give you guys some quality information but starting off with kind of our first idea and topic we're gonna i'm gonna let kate introduce his idea that he has proposed it's going to be kind of separate from other podcasts that you will see so kate um, so one of the things that we want to do is uh, kind of keep track of the boom and busts that we're going to go ahead and pick, and uh, we're going to give some projections, and we're going to pick a player that we feel like might boom this week, and a player that might be a bust, someone that you might want to avoid. So we're going to keep track of it between all of us, and a little bit of a competition, and hopefully you can trust somebody with a better record and maybe go with their pick as we continue to grow this podcast yeah so i mean i think it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool for us to kind of throw that idea out there it's gonna be kind of unique to us and we're also gonna be adding in a little bit of waiver wire pickups each week we're gonna all so we have another member named dakota who unfortunately was unable to join us this week but he should be joining us in the following week but we're all planning to bring our own waiver wire pickups in the following week same as our own personal boom and bust and whoever has the top ranked player at their own respective position is going to be the person ranked the highest of that week and then it'll tear down from there tiebreakers will disclose once we're able to run into that issue but that's kind of the formatting that we're looking at right now but i mean our goal and plan we're just going to be kind of looking at the waiver wire for the following week kind of give a recap of what happened in the following week and we're just going to kind of interject hop in and kind of go on, kind of go at random it's not going to be really set in stone so kind of recapping i'm going to let josh or jason kind of recap the following the following week that just kind of occurred kind of talk about some big things that did happen and then we're just going to kind of jump along you want to start josh yeah oh uh, yeah sure so um you just want to talk about like who like who did well this week and yeah i mean it's up to you if you want to disclose teams if you want to talk about like player specific if you want to talk about like it's up to you on how you want to kind of look at that 
Okay, so yeah, I mean, coming into this, kind of the, the guy I've been, you know, wanted to talk about was Cordell Patterson. Um, I think I watched that game, and I think he did really well. I mean, he didn't have a ton of points, but, like, he had some really good runs. And um, I don't know, I just think that he's going to be really good throughout the rest of the season. And they got Carolina this week, which is, you know, pretty bad defense, especially uh, considering how much – how many injuries and how much they've traded away and all that. So uh, I think he's going to do pretty well this week. And yeah, I'm pretty high on Cordell Patterson. There's no right. one that I want to see less on the opposing team than that man, Cordero Patterson. Every time he's, gotta, he's in he's someone's spot, spot, I feel like he's just going to go off for, for 20, 30 on any yeah. given day. It's, it's so dumb. Mm-hmm. We make sure to let's talk about that. Uh, did you guys see that highlight? of him on his rushing touchdown where he just laid a human being down. Yep. That was he usually doesn't do that stuff. He was hungry. Yeah. Dude, he that's like as you said, like I with him that. the problem I have is like Algiers kind of stepped up, looked pretty solid. Huntley's looked solid. Like how do you think the committee is gonna favor? Like I think he's gonna get the most reps, but how do you think he's gonna distinguish himself to take a majority like he had at the start of the year? I don't know. I think he's just, I mean, I think he's just got to find a way to, um, I mean, obviously he needs to stay healthy in order to play, but um, he just has to find a way to keep, um, you know, keep doing more with what he gets, you know? I, like I said, I watched the game and most of his runs were for like, you know, three, four, five yards, but he's just got to, I mean, find the hole and I think they just need to keep feeding him the ball more and He's really good on the pass, too, which they didn't give him money passes. And, I mean, they don't have re- any receivers right now. So, I think they just need to rely on him. I don't really know if it's, you know, as much as it is on him as it is the coaching staff and Marcus Mariota. I'll jump in. Uh, that I'm someone that's probably benefited from the Algier side of things. I picked him up in a couple of my leagues. And... Uh, He's benefited me until this last week um, since Cordell's been back. <clears throat> but, I mean, you saw for the majority of the beginning of their drives, I think, Algier was their guy. And it's like, I think if they got closer to the red zone, they would start handing the ball off to Cordell. And mm-hmm. I think <clears throat> I think they're going to continue a committee in a way to keep Cordell uh, healthy, um, to keep some of the reps off of him. So, I mean, as an Algier guy that has him right now, I'm hoping – I'm hoping it's still a committee and it's not old Cordell. So, um, but yeah, I think Cordell is going to start to get those touchdown and red zone touches more than Algier will. Talking about the uh, largest performer of last week, did any of you guys have Joseph Mixon? Nope. That man. Nope. Played against him. <laughs> that man. I luckily did not play against him. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I would have cried myself to sleep. He just, it seemed that everything on that offense had to be going through that man. And I mean, I feel like the best way to sum it up was, I'm pretty sure I watched a penalty happen. They lost five or 10 yards and then proceeded to hand the ball off to him for his fourth or fifth touchdown. And he kicks it out. And you're just like, this dude's going to score again, isn't he? And so you just watch his point total just go up. Oh, without like, without Jamar, I mean, they against the Browns, they like, look terrible on offense they couldn't get anything going i don't know how much they ran but i feel like you didn't get any more than 15 to 20 touches yeah that's what i was looking at right now they kind of flipped that script right there they want to kind of run heavier against the panthers but then again it it, it's the panthers so i mean so he had about a defense that's pretty depleted he had 26 touches 26 26 22 rushes Against yeah, they just got to keep Browns doing that. Or the Oh, no, 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 Carolina. I guess the Browns, he had 15 touches. Yeah, like I said, 15. Yeah. Like, they didn't, like, without Jamar in that lineup, they just, they didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And then they had yeah. to switch it up and go run heavy against the Panthers, and the man goes off for five yeah. buddies yeah. and 178 yards or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. So. The next guy I want to talk about will make Austin happy. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. 
So Justin, last week he had, what did he do? He broke the rushing record? Last yeah. week, yeah, he ran for 170. He had 42 points. Yes. 42 points. What was that, like 25 over projection too? Like that's like a, that's a boom yeah, right that's, there. It's crazy. In the, in the two weeks before that, he had 26 and 23. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he's only rostered in just over 50% of leagues. Jay, if you shame. want to talk about a perfect, crazy. a perfect segue to that, if there's a man to have booming this next week, it's the man, Justin Fields, against, against the, the Detroit Lions. Yes, the Lions. Worst defense in the NFL. Yeah, 19th. He's projected for 19 points and coming off of 42. You're not he's anticipating gonna he's going to put up that kind of numbers <laughs> again, but I'm expecting at least a 25 to maybe even a 30, 30 point. Yeah. He's projected 22, 21.8. He's projected 21.8? Yeah, and, um, yeah, PPR. Yeah, he's, those numbers are continually increasing. Yeah, would you start him over Jalen Hurts? No. I'm asking. I'm asking personally for money right now. Right now. <laughs> let's uh, let's pass that around. Alex, you start off first. Would you start him over Jalen Hurts? Who does? Who's uh, Washington Commanders? Washington. Oh, no, absolutely not. Okay. No, I- I'm taking my boy Jalen. Okay. I'm going Jalen. I have him in a couple of my leagues. I got him too. I can't. I can't stray from my fans. I'd probably have to go Jalen Hurts too. Jalen. Okay. You're awesome. gonna love mine. I'm taking Justin Fields. I, just, I now, respect it. I'm going to make my argument because everybody else kind of has the status quo. My statement to that is he came off of rushing for 100 plus yards. And I think he can replicate that same performance, which guarantees 10 points right there. And he's probably going to find the end zone through the ground as well. So that's already another guaranteed six points. So all he has to do versus one of the worst defenses in football is go out there and throw for two touchdowns and throw for a little bit over 100 yards. And he's already looking at like a 25 to a 30-point projection. And I'm thinking like Jalen is going to be a solid pick, but I think sometimes you kind of have to take that risk and ride with a guy who's looking hot. And I'm I'm willing to take that bet. And I'm starting Justin Fields over Dak this week. And, and so you're I'm like, saying there's no bias here? There is 100% bias. I am a Bears fan. I I am a Bears fan. But I'm also saying this as a fantasy owner of a man who has Dak and Justin Fields. And I personally think Justin Fields is the man to start this week. I would take him over Dak 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I would start him over Jalen, in my personal opinion. That's fair. I might have to consider it. I like the mask. But um, we'll talk about – Alex, I'm going to throw Josh Allen your way because you want, you love watching that demise down my thing. So would you like to talk I, about what happened to Josh Allen? I, I, I just feel bad for the guy. What happened specifically? <laughs> fit, he's, gonna, dude, he's probably going to have to get s- surgery on that elbow. Well, could you talk um, about it a little more specific? <laughs> I didn't read much about it. I just know that he's not playing like the next two weeks. So Uh-oh. Josh Allen on a third down versus the Jets – cocked his arm back and he got slapped on his way through and so they're talking about him possibly having something wrong with his ucl and his elbow ucl tear yeah possibly ucl ucl tear and so they're running the reports and they're gonna have something distinguished to the media tomorrow yeah so you'll know more about that then right now he's only questionable but as alex said we gotta talk about how many people have been picking up case keenum though in the last day on sleeper, 160k. Another question: How does that affect Diggs? Oh, big time. I'm saying, big I'm time saying. Case Keenum's still a good quarterback. Okay, but if he's like receiver two or three right now, what do you think he drops? Ten. Who Diggs? Nah. Diggs yeah, like the ten range. Like no? in fancy? No, I don't think he drops. Ten. I think he still go, goes for like 15 to 20. No, 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 I mean like for this week, if we're ranking receivers. Oh, oh, okay. So matchups. I think he's still, still top five. I top. think yeah, still top five. He's still going to put up his projection. Yeah, yeah. I have him just outside the top five. Uh, I've, Who's your top five? I have Cup, Hills, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, Jay Jettas, and then Amon Ra over him. You mean okay? My, you mean my guy Tyreek Hill? the leading pass catcher right now. I NFL. just want to let you know, you don't own him in every league. I have him who's, in another league that we are in the same. On, he, he's, on, he's on pace to 
break uh, Calvin Johnson's receiving record? Isn't Still? it Cooper Cups? <laughs> no, it's Calvin's. Did Cooper not break it last year? No. He is like two yards short. But yeah, no, he's Mike McDaniel. That man, he could scheme he me it, open. He had more games. He did it with more games. He did. Yeah. Yeah, Calvin, nineteen sixty four. <laughs> Cooper Cup, nineteen forty seven. But he did that with one extra game too, right? Because yeah. they did seventeen games last year. Yeah, yeah. seventeen. I'm not gonna lie. I think that Mike McDaniel plays a la- a massive influence on that. He he could scheme like Jason Open out oh, versus the top corners, and yeah. it's like it's absurd. It's like this dude, that dude, he has no defensive mind to Miami, but damn, does he bring one hell of an offense? In his interviews, in his interviews, yeah. Were you talking about his interviews? Yeah, yeah. He, I was gonna say like he looks like he's exhausted because he must be scheming twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. Like, the comments are hilarious. I love Tyreek's hilarious. comments on him. Tyreek Tyreek talks about how everybody on that team has the biggest balls out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys see that story about the ping pong table? Yeah. Yeah. He removed the ping pong. So Mike McDaniel was like, you're such a great leader for removing it. And he was like, I'm trying to get this busted ass ping pong table out of here. I'm trying to get a go one for the boys. <laughs> they already ordered a new one. So funny. That's funny. Ah. I think uh, something that'd be good to talk about, and, you know, it's a little bit in the future, but Deshaun Watson will be back in just a few weeks. Yes. Yeah. Especially if you have no rules. Go pick him up. So three three more weeks, yeah. Or four if you include this coming week. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we still have what? We play the the Dolphins this week? Yeah, Dolphins, and then Tampa Bay, and then Buffalo, and then we go to Houston. I think you'll have him versus Houston. Yeah, he's going to play. Uh, Andrew Barry already said that that's his. Is that a primetime game? Huh? Is that going to be a primetime game, Houston and Cleveland? Yeah, but I don't think it's scheduled to be a primetime. I think it's a 1 o'clock kick. Man, that's going to be a good one. Just like the fans are going to be riled up. Oh, they're gonna be they're yeah, gonna be rowdy because that's in Houston, and then his oh, back in Cleveland is against the uh, is against the Bengals. I feel like that was a little intentional. Yeah, a hundred percent. That was intentional on on a uh, Goodell's behalf, especially yeah. after that appeal. I'd like mm-hmm. to throw out a name and hear everybody's opinion on it, but Cade's first. Tony Pollard. You mean the owner of the Dallas Cowboys backfield? Yes. The gentleman who is currently up. So me and Cade happen to be in a league together. Oh. And Cade is on his way to acquiring a young gentleman named Tony Pollard from him. Really? That trade is uh, piquing your interest, huh? It is, but it's not. Because Michael Let's talk Pittman... about it. What are you giving up? So, yeah, we'll discuss this. So I want to hear both sides of this. So um, I'll let Cade start off because it's his trade proposed to me. And I'll give my opinion. So, basically, I guess, I don't know. I guess I can just say some of the players that I have. So, in this league, I have <coughs> Monster and James Conner as probably my two best. And a disappointing Najee Harris as my three probably top running backs. Uh, I'm take that off and some time to get it figured out. Yeah. And so... I have a strong wide receiver core with Devontae Adams, Michael Pittman, and Tyler Boyd catching some passes. Um, and so basically my trade is exactly – I'm giving Austin here James Conner and Michael Pittman for Tony Pollard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's – who who you got for your running backs, Austin? So I have – DeAndre Swift, a gentleman who never touches the football within his the other team's twenty yard line, and I have Josh Jacobs, who looked like he was going to have a breakout year until the last two weeks, and then I have Tony Pollard. That offense has kind of regressed a little bit. Yes, if we're talking about the Raiders, that yes. offense has most definitely regressed. But my receiving core is where I stand strong. I have Cooper Cup. 
AJ Brown, T. Higgins, Jacoby Myers, and Amari Cooper. So the those guys, I'm sitting strong, and so the issue I have with this trade, unfortunately, is Mike Michael Pittman, phenomenal receiver, but mm-hmm. he has Sam Ellinger throwing him the football. It's fair. And he really just doesn't give me the upside that I feel like I need at a flex mm-hmm. position. That's I feel fair. like having Tony Pollard there would guarantee me more points. And then James Conner, he's just so injury prone. He hasn't shown anything for the weeks that he has played. And Tony Pollard came off of his strongest week against Chicago before his bye. So it's not that I'm sure. against trading Tony Pollard. It's just I don't see... I think yeah, Pollard could literally beat out my number two. Like I would rather have Josh Jacobs in my flex with how much more mm-hmm. confidence I feel that Tony Pollard will put up better pointage. Mm-hmm. Josh talking, Jacobs in the flex is good though. We're talking PPR for Tony or we're standard. talking PPR. Okay, for yeah. PPR, Zeke is supposed to play this week, so they're both projected ten to eleven points. So I mean, I think you know Pollard could be a solid flex option, but if you want him as like your RB two. Or RB one, I don't, I don't think it's a good deal. Not with Zeke back, because Zeke, I still think is like the. I think if Jerry Jones is there, Zeke's going to be the man, even though he's not performing like it. That's Tony Pollard's backfield. I, it should be, but I, I don't think it's going to be. I think, yeah. I think it's still like Zeke, because you know they're paying him all the money. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I don't necessarily agree with that because I feel like Tony has been getting a good amount of reps as of recent, as of recently. And I feel like he's been able to, like, kind of step into, like, a much higher percentage. Like, his snap percentage has increased even when Zeke was healthy in Detroit. And so it's going over 50% of snaps, which, like, isn't really good. So who's getting more touches? Huh? Just curious. Who, who got more touches the last time they both played? Let's see. If... I'm not sure. Let's see. I think they both played in Detroit, and I think he was healthy in Detroit. He had Zeke, Zeke had more touches. Zeke had fifteen to twelve. Okay, it, but it's probably going to be more like seventeen, eighteen Pollard, maybe eleven Zeke. Yeah, I mean, let's see. So no. Tony Pollard last week or the week when he played Chicago, fourteen touches for one hundred thirty-one yards, and obviously the three touchdowns inflated that. But he's also been a fairly solid pass option. Or when Cooper Rush was playing, and with Dak, I feel like he's going to be a good drop off target as well. Yeah, he's a better option, no question. And so it's, I, I agree with the logic what, that he's providing, Kate. I wouldn't pursue this guy as like a solid running back, too, because yes, it's sir. like he has high upside, but the Cowboys just have a great idea of just forcing their $90 million back still out there, even though it's not yeah. the best for their team success. Understandable. I picked no. up uh, I picked up Tony Pollard too in one of my leagues. Um, I tr- um, and I sent I Jason not. this trade, but I traded Mike Evans for Christian Kirk and Tony Pollard, and I felt pretty good about that. You um, got Tony Pollard and Christian Kirk mm-hmm. for Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. It's pretty solid. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's really good. He needed receivers, and uh, and uh, I just asked. I wanted Tony Pollard. I got him during the bye week too. I yeah, the guy I traded you. with, he's like, I don't know. He's he's got a bad record. I don't even know what it is off the top of my head, but oh even if I got a bad record, so record I'm, I'm holding strong. Hey, so a uh, question for you guys, another backfield competition. Uh how do we feel about AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones? Is Aaron Jones he did get him last week. Yeah, he he walked out on crutches and a boot. But, but along but, with Romeo Dobbs and true. one other, yeah. But they did say he's like day to day and Rashawn Gary. Yeah, he's gonna be. I think I think Jones is gonna be back for Dallas, which is Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says right here. Report should be able to play this week. Yeah, ankle. So I, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't see right now, that. honestly, I don't know if I would <laughs> the Green Bay running backs. I mean, we stick. I wouldn't do anything, yeah. Green Bay. Sorry. I mean, we don't. It's either we don't want to run the ball at all, or when we do run the ball, it just goes terribly. I think the only guy you can roster right now in Green Bay is Robert Robert Tunyon. No, <laughs> I think you I've got the bus this week. 
Alan Lazard, Alan Lazard has been uh, he's been hurt a lot, but he's good for 15 points every week. If he's healthy, yeah, he won. He yeah, that's right. Week this week, he went off for like 21, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, that was I, that's when I should have made that trade, Austin. When I sent Kenneth Walker out, I should have. I shouldn't have picked up Terry. I uh-huh. should have picked up Terry and and Lazard, but I switched it to like I countered. You could have gotten Amari Cooper and. Nah, he wouldn't have traded that. Just check the numbers on Tunyon and take back what I said. Yeah, I was gonna say, bro, I've got him as my as my. Uh... <laughs> yeah, not too good. He's Actually, like a top. Like I mean, there's there's not very many good tight ends in the league right now. But he's it's still a literally, top 10. it's literally one. Two, three. It's top ten. It's literally Kelsey, Andrews, Goddard. That's it. Yeah. Like it's such a hard drop off, and it's a gigantic drop off from Kelsey to to Andrews. Who was your uh, third guy? Goddard. Goddard. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Dallas. That's he's my guy. Good. Yeah, he's good. He's so so he's had like they, one, I mean, one bad week, maybe two, where he's put up less than ten points. So what are some tight end options then? Because I know Andrews is on a bye. Kelsey is Kelsey playing this week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's Kelsey Goddard. Other than that, what are some good pickups or options? I know David Njoku, he's, he's on a questionable line. right now. Questionable. Yeah. But if he's, if he's healthy, he is a good option. Yeah, 100%. Especially against, uh, I, I don't know. Dolphins kind of beefed up their defense. They got 32 on their dome last week against Chicago. Yeah, their defense isn't too hot. <laughs> it's not fantastic, but. Yeah. I think it's a good pickup. If or a good guy to be playing ever the that? Chargers is ever Gerald Everett. Yeah, he's I think Evan Ingram's usually a good target. He came off of a very bad week last week. And so I think that he usually gets some fair red zone targets. And he's facing the Chiefs this upcoming week. So yeah. I think I, he's gonna be able to get some some receptions, probably get you around ten points. Oh, um yeah. Broncos. Yeah, Greg, Greg Dol- 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 yeah, Dol- yeah, 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 UCLA product. Mm-hmm. So he's put up he's put up twelve points or more, I believe, the last like three weeks in a row. He's been and that was his first game, by the way, three weeks ago. Yeah, he he's been solid for sure. Yeah, he's a good pickup. I think another one target. is uh, K to Auten for Tampa Bay. Yeah, but yeah, I just got his first yeah. touchdown pass. Yeah, I think Tom Brady likes to run zone. His Tom baby Gronk. Like divorced and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. man's happy. Yeah, he's still he though? Yeah, I think I'm gonna pick him up this week too. Yeah, I'm actually yeah, he's, happy. He's pretty. He's a good option. And I, I heard he, he got the game when he touched on. I guess this is for his mom that just passed away. Oh, there you go. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like a friend. Yeah, he won me one of my FanDuel games this week. Um, he hasn't been bad this year. For I mean, twenty second ranked. But well, he just not like weeks. didn't someone get hurt? Yeah, they're without uh, Cameron Braid. Yeah, oh. so he's been getting a lot more touches. Yeah. Since then. Um, but he's still he put up yeah seventeen point eight, ten point four, ten point three. I mean, he's had like two bad weeks in the middle of all of those, but the last five weeks to be averaging like twelve points a week is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys kind of change the subject back to the running backs? How do you guys feel about Khalil Herbert and David Montgomery in that situation? Good question. So Let's hear Austin first. As a Chicago Bears enthusiast, <laughs> I'd like to inform you guys that if there's any running back you should pick up for the Chicago Bears, it is named Justin Fields. There is <laughs> Khalil Herbert and David Get Montgomery up. unfortunately share too much percentage of snaps. And even though they are the top rushing team, I think the aerial attack is going to have a larger impact than before because of the acquisition of Chase Claypool. And so I think that we're still going to be a really heavy run dominant team, but I don't, I just don't like the production numbers that Khalil Herbert and David Montgomery put up. And since they, I mean, the Lions put up a pretty stout defense against Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon last week. I would expect if there was one person to start, I would start, Khalil Herbert over David Montgomery, but I would never put him higher than maybe a flex, maybe a flex yeah. option too. But it's like he's a really boom player, and it's like he's projected probably like six points this week, even though they're just, versing the Lions. Just uh, Herbert. Yeah, go ahead. He's projected eight point eight four. What about Montgomery? 
Montgomery is projected probably around 10. David, my issue with him is they scheme him to run like a boulder up the middle. 13.05. They scheme him in such poor run plays. They don't let him get a running start. Most of the time when he's in the into like the actual set or the lineup, they literally are anticipating run. So they're stacking the box. They're playing. It's like an unfortunate setup. But with Kula Herbert being able to catch a football, like it's... It's kind of a difficult task for you to only bite on run. And so it opens up the pass, and it also opens up Justin Fields' ability to kind of scramble out of the pocket and make plays with his feet. So I just say, with Montgomery, like that hot start he kind of got off to, where he was like starting to be a, like a solid RB2. He was running a lot in between the tackles. And, I mean, when you that's your only way of producing. Defenses are going to catch on quick, be able to stuff that. Yeah. Oh. Just to add on to what you said, Austin, I don't I don't take the Lions defense as being any good. I think it was more that Green Bay had three, I believe, three turnovers in the red zone. So they got down there. They were moving the ball pretty well. I think it was more Green Bay's inability to play offense than it was the Lions actually scheming up good defense. The Lions defense is it's pretty terrible. I believe they're ranked last right now in the league. I think there's second. If you have any Bears running backs, um, I'm not going to say start them, but I, I would not fear the Lions defense. Fair analysis. Let's talk uh, down the line on matchups then. We'll talk to um, Cleveland versus the Dolphins this week. Who are our starting sits there? Uh, for Cleveland. Probably, I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like start if you have if you have DPJ if you like in a deep flex spot if you like a three flex league I would start DPJ. Amari Cooper leave him in there 100. percent Nick Chubb of course is going to run all, all over that defense and then maybe maybe bench Kareem. I, I feel like if he's playing, I think he's if you don't have a tight end. Like, if you don't have a top 15 tight end, which everybody should have a top 15 tight end. I mean, no one's playing in a 32-man league other than me. Um, <laughs> men? Yeah, it's long story. It's it's the dumbest league ever. But yeah, I was about yeah. to say, that sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, it's it's the worst thing in the world. Who's your top uh, pick? Oh, dude, I had to, like, my number one pick was Brees Hall. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was good bro. for a few weeks. Yeah, it was good for a few weeks. <laughs> Um, I would say my best player on that team right now. I just pulled it up. Uh, Zeke. Yeah, probably Zeke. You're not going to win. Yeah, no, probably not. I mean, I got Lazard, too. Solid. But did you pick, like, defensive players, too? So, like, like position players. It's dumb. But, uh, but if you have Njoku and he – if he's playing, I would I would start him. Yeah, he's the guy I'm trying to pick up because I've Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews on a buy. 100% pick up in Joku if he's available. Sure, if, he's play, if he's playing, yeah. I feel like he's going to – because he's somehow learned to catch the ball. He's been a decent route runner with decent speed. He's hard yeah. to tackle. I mean, it takes like three DBs to bring that man down. But it just, his hands were like rocks year one and year two. But this year, it's he's gotten a lot better at catching the football, which is great. So, up with the fans. Austin, do you have any do you have any starts or sits this week for Miami versus Miami? Oh, we're not for Miami. Oh, um, you're not benching either. They're two phenomenal receivers. They're both top five for a good reason. So I would keep them in their position. Um, Is Waddle top five? Yeah, he might be five or six. Right. He's one of the two. Um, Raheem Mostert is a fat sit. Yeah, he's he is, five. He's taking a backseat to Jeff Wilson. And Jeff Wilson, a great start in the flex position. If you've had him as a niner because of the injuries that occurred, he is going to be getting a majority of the touches under Mike McDaniel. And he is just, he looked great in that first day. And it was his first game back with Mike McDaniel. So I'm only anticipating those results tenfold. So he looks like a great candidate. Tua, um... I, if if you need to start him, start him. If you have like I don't know what situation you'd have where you'd have Tua and another great quarterback, 
but I mm-hmm. think he's a great candidate this week, especially with those two pass catchers. Um, Speaking of which, to, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jake. I was, was going to say, what about Mike Isecki? The best, the best gritty man in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah. he's he's an interesting candidate. I don't like him because of the target share that he gets. I feel like he only gets a small percentage, yeah. and he's really touchdown dependent. So, if you could start anybody else, if you could go out and get yourself a, 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 I would honestly start Robert Tunyon over him, and that's saying something. Um, okay. <laughs> if you could pursue any other tight end that's on the free agent market that's near the top, I would honestly pursue them over Robert, Hill? Mike Gusecki. Huh? Take some Hill? No. no, no, not going that far. No, he he's the biggest boom bust <laughs> player out in the world. Him, him and uh, Cordero, those are one at one A and one B boom bust. No, mm-hmm. Cordero actually has more solidified. Taysom yeah, Hill literally no. could play quarterback one week. Next week, he won't see him for like less than two percent snaps. He'll yeah. be on special teams. So he'll be a gunner. Yeah, yeah exactly. he'll lay out somebody, and you're like, is that Taysom Hill? And you're like, ah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Speaking of to uh, start to a hundred percent, agreed. A hundred percent. I mean, the Browns' defense is not gonna. It's gonna be another shootout for them. Like a hundred percent start to a. Unless we actually figured something out against the Bengals, that Browns' defense is not gonna do anything to stop them because they're gonna have to stop Jeff Wilson, Waddle, Gesicki. They're gonna have to stop Tyreek Hill and Tua's. Uh, I mean, he's a run threat at times. So, and one thing we don't do well is tackle. So, yeah, I mean, I think after that dude got put into almost para, like, yeah, no, he was no. almost paralyzed. I don't know if he's he was gonna almost, be the runner. He almost died. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be the runner, but regardless, speaking of, I did not even realize that Jeff. I forgot Jeff Wilson got traded to the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. That's why I left him on my bench in the guillotine league last week. Yeah, you had a pretty I, good week. Yeah, I mean, but it was like owners. So I completely forgot that he got traded. So. What's a, what's another? I'm gonna look through matchups and I'm gonna throw out matchups and I want. I can read if you want. Yeah. Um, so Sunday night is gonna be Chargers and Niners. I think that might be a pretty pretty decent one, depending off the Chargers show up. So talking about the Chargers showing up, that's a big depending. Yeah. Keenan mm-hmm. Allen. I don't know if he's gonna be back this week. It be. Um, we don't know. Mike Williams is not gonna come back. Mike he's Williams is out. Yeah. yeah. So, so Keenan Allen is questionable, and he's projected. If he plays, they actually don't have a projection for him. Yeah, but he's, he's questionable day to day. But I feel like that's been the headline for the last couple months. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like Michael Thomas, which I would love to well, spend a whole segment talking oh, shit man. about that gentleman. <laughs> we'll save that. Man's got a dislocated toe. Yeah, and uh, who was that? Brian Robinson got shot and came back in six weeks. Exactly. <laughs> Cade, would you like to talk about uh, who your starting seats would be for that matchup for the Chargers versus uh, Niners? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see a, that Chargers team that was just this last week. I think like we were just talking about Mike and <clears throat> Keenan are going to be out, so it's going to be a very similar Chargers team to what this last week was. Um. With that, I think if if the Chargers can play good defense, even though they are really bad this year defensively, if they can play good defense, I could see it being a pretty close game. I think the Chargers pulled out a pretty gutsy win this last week. Um, I mean, you got to be starting Eckler. I mean, he's going to be getting touches, rushing the ball, and catching the ball. I mean, he's going to do it all for them. Um, I think. I think you have to start, is it, Jordan Palmer? Is that who it Joshua. is? Joshua. Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer. I think you got to be starting him if those two other wide receivers are going to be out like they have been. Um, and like I said about the tight ends with Everett, I think you had to be starting Everett. I think those three options for the Chargers are the, the best. Um, for the Niners, I mean, I'm excited to see what McCaffrey can do the second week after this bye. He looked oh, amazing God. the other week. I have him in a couple of my leagues, and people have been trying to get play him. against them. You yeah, like a I, you like a hat trick? I got him <laughs> three different ways. Yeah, I mean, like people are trying to get him from me, and I'm just like, no, I have to watch this <laughs> play out. Like, I gotta see this guy play. 
um, and be rooting for him. So, I mean, McCaffrey, Kittle's a tough one for me in a way because now that I have McCaffrey and Debo and, I mean, all these options for them, I mean, I think Kittle might be starting to fade away a little bit as a tight end. Um, he's still top five. Yeah, I, I, I think he's still solid, though. I mean, he's still going to get his touches. He's st- um, but, I mean, I don't know outside of that. I mean, I, if you guys can throw out some players that might be a borderline starter sit. Elijah um, Mitchell. Brandon Ayuk. I think, I, think you Ayuk. Start Ayuk. I think you have to start Ayuk in a flex spot. Flex. If, if it's a deep flex league, like a three flex, 100%. Yeah. But if yeah. it's a two flex or even like a one flex yeah. league, one. Yeah. I'm not risking it. Absolutely. So um, I have no choice. I got to put him in my flex. Either him or like Terrence Marshall Jr. Oh, I use your better option. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we have to talk about Elijah Mitchell coming back this week. I don't think he's going to do much. I Maybe. think he's going to be the McCaffrey show. I think they love what they have with McCaffrey. Uh, yeah. There's a reason they traded for him, and we saw it last week. He threw three different touchdowns or was a part of three different touchdowns. Yeah, three, I mean, one, they caught won. one, ran one. Yeah, yeah. They want I don't think Mitchell's going to get more than like maybe seven ten touches. Yeah, Max. You have, you just have too many mouths to feed. I think I've been saying trade Debo. I mean, I don't. I think Debo, at this point, you know, he's a receiver two or a flex option, but I don't think he's he's definitely not Debo from last year. Or he's you know, right. He passes a game and then getting the rock out of the backfield another ten times. Right. I think Kittle, too. If Kittle's another guy, um, you can consider trading because I just don't think the upside is there with McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that matchup, though, with the uh, start and sit, I would probably bench every Los Angeles Chargers player aside from Eckler just because 49ers are like a top five defense. I would trust. Well, Herbert, I don't know. Even him, like I don't even feel like he's gonna put up like anything crazy. Yeah, you put up. I um, probably put up fifteen points. And... Yeah, like he'll put up his. He'll struggle to put up his projection. I think. I mean, that's a really good defense in in San Francisco. That's gonna be tough mm-hmm. for him to. He put up. And if he has a day, I'll eat my words. But I just Eckler is probably the only one that I think I would start in that offense. Like, his, like, the, the Niners are a little bit like the Packers. Yeah. Were... Go ahead, Jason. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Justin Herbert's last game, they played Atlanta. And he only put up 12. Right. They're, 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 like, the, they're like a bottom half. They're the worst. Defense. Defense. No, they're terrible. Atlanta, and no. They're, they're, they're near mid. They're terrible. They might have one of the worst scoring defenses in football. I'm going to be honest with you. I, w- I want to say that they're like somewhere around 16 or 17. They're, they're not as low as you think. Working it up right now. What's the record right now? Four and four? Four and five. Uh, they're they lose the tiebreaker right now to to Tampa Bay. They beat them head to head. Was it? To their their Falcons they, are twenty seven. I've got them seventeen. Oh, they're yeah, young guys. Five. What do we? Five. We're all using something different. They're uh, bottom five. Twenty eight ranked. They're truly a bottom five defense. It's shown throughout this entire year. Their defense is yeah. not good. They've only won because they've been in shootouts, but they've somehow managed to win. Well, and they also play in probably the worst division. Yeah, yeah. I mean the Bucks are on Giannis top and at four and five. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they, the Bucks are four and five and in first place. Right. And Mac Jones and the Patriots. I don't know if that's Mac Jones' team to be honest, but the Patriots are Billy five Zappy and four in and last place in that division. Like it's just it's a tale of two worlds. You have like an like even like the Jets. That's a surprise this year. NFC is just trash. The NFC is very bad because here's the thing is like Brady could end up going eight and nine have to be who <laughs> in the playoffs Kirk Cousins and then play Geno Smith for the NFC championship other way around Philly maybe Philly oh yeah Philly yeah I <clears throat> always forget that they're at NFC I, know, I think the Niners are the hottest going to be the hottest team in the NFC yeah. we, I, I'd like to disagree with that seeing that there is an undefeated yeah. team in the NFC, it's kind of a hard one to be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. they haven't they're lost, the but... Cards, I think, but they've got yeah, they've got the Eagles. The Eagles have got a Mickey Mouse off. schedule. <laughs> it's a cakewalk. Yeah. What they played. They do. I mean, I, mean and I, I kept saying, well, they got to play Green Bay, but now that's going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
More of a cakewalk. Yeah, it's the place Chicago. Well the ground. Hey, so how are we feeling about Seattle and Tampa Bay? I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, players in that game. DK, Lockett, Kenneth Walker, and then Tampa, we got Godwin and Evans and Brady, maybe, Kate Otten. Is that his name, Kate Otten? Mm-hmm. Kate Otten. The Leonard Fournette. I don't know how we feel about him. Playoff Lenny, my boy. Yeah. So, Austin, you want to start? I'll let Josh take this one. Okay. So we're just doing who we'd start? Start and say for the Bucks and Hawks. Mm. I'd, pro- I'd start Gino over over Tom. Um, and then I'd pro- yeah, I'd start I'd start Mike Evans and DK. Um, obviously Kenneth Walker. Mm. I don't know. I don't know about Lenny. I don't know about Lenny in this game. Here, let me look at him. Lenny's going to go off. Lenny's you think not going to so? go off, but he's been consistently getting like 10 points. Yeah, he's like, I mean, like, yeah, he's not going to get 20 points. Last two weeks, not the greatest for him. I don't know if he's going to, I don't think he'll get 20 points. How are we feeling about Chris Godwin? I feel like he's getting 10 to 15 every week, but no more than that. He hasn't had a touchdown all year. It's 12, 12, 15, 11, 13, 10. That's been a season. I'd probably I'd probably sit him and I'd sit Julio Jones too. I would start him in a in a flex spot. Godwin, good one, yeah. or Godwin, yeah. yeah. I would start Godwin in a flex. I was like, that's bold sitting Chris Godwin. <laughs> that was pretty- yeah, I would sit him. So I mean, I mean, I'd okay. So I'd start I'd start DK over him. I'd start Evans over him. Um, I probably Lockett. wouldn't I wouldn't start a Lockett over him. So yeah, maybe. Really, Josh, okay. I want to throw out no, that Lockett start, has. I put Godwin in over Lockett. Lockett has the most points out of all of those guys we've listed in receivers. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he does. That's Mister Consistency right there. Yeah, he. Uh, Our Lockett has the he, most. Yeah, he's ninth right now in PPR. Mm-hmm. It's surprising. Dang, okay, yeah, I didn't even realize. That. He's been. I did not either. Of, he's been he's the only true projected sleeper. thirteen. Of he's had 13.7. He's had two weeks below 10 points, uh, and he's averaging. Where's the average at? Why does it never show it? Oh man. Regardless, I mean, he's had he's had weeks where he's put up 19, 16, 27, but yeah, he's he's the number 12 wide receiver, uh, number nine in PPR. Yeah. So he's a he's a strong candidate. Then. I'm sleeping. Yeah, I'm sleeping. Hey, I mean, this is as informative to us as well. Let's, uh, um, we can talk Monday night. Let's, Here's the Monday night. We got the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles versus the Washington Commanders. Eagles. Start or seat. I will, uh, <laughs> Alex will be right back, everyone. That didn't just read the message. Yeah, I saw that. Right there. <laughs> and so, well, I'll, I'll kind of wait. If you can actually, if we want to zoom in on Alex's camera right here, we see Baker laying on his bed. He kind of looks like Baker, does he not? The pub? No, Alex. <laughs> he looks a little bit like Baker. Without the beard. Yeah, without the beard. <laughs> That's an interesting take right there. Viewers, I, I want your guys' they're opinion both, They're on both white one. guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> let's talk a little bit about our fantasy team since we'll talk about the starting seat when Alex has come back. But um, let's talk about a little bit about our owns. We'll talk about the best and the worst. So I'll start us off. My best team is our dynasty team that me and Kate happen to be a part of. My team is stacked from the head to the toe, and I'm going to kind of list them off in order. So the quarterback is one and only Lamar Jackson, the first two weeks MVP, the last seven weeks disappointment. He's He's been solid, could, could be worse. We have Austin Eckler, the bald man himself. Pretty sure he's number one in running backs. I believe he is number one yeah. running back. Yeah. And then I have uh, his brother. I have a new 49er, Christian McCaffrey, on that team as well. He is Him being a 49er has only 
just solidified my happiness for having that man. He's going to be a 20-point machine. Then we have Tyreek Hill, the number one receiver. Beautiful. Talking about Chris Godwin, as we mentioned him earlier. He, uh, he's he been, not, I don't want to say like a disappointment, but he hasn't lived up to the standards that Chris Godwin normally has been able to put up in previous previous years. Then I have the best tight end, Travis Kelsey. For a dynasty league, if you can't tell, I was strategizing for the first two years. The rest of them are going to be, uh, fuck it, I hope I draft rookies really well. And then after that, we have DeAndre Hopkins. I was willing to wait out his six-game suspension to get the true number one in Arizona. And then uh, I would have Keenan Allen, but I have his uh, his replacement, Joshua Palmer, right there. And then defense and kicker, I don't care about. That's really interchangeable. But Nick Folk, I picked him up off the waiver. The Patriots kickers always find a way to disappoint, or like their offense finds a way to disappoint themselves within the 30-yard line. So if you can get a Patriots kicker any year, they are a surefire top three mm-hmm. kicker. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. Same thing's going with the Bucks right now, too. They can't seem to get a touchdown. Yeah, Ryan Suckup, he's a phenomenal pick, too. And then defense, that's interchangeable every week. But the Patriots defense, too. They play bums. They put up 20 points. They're a great acquisition. But that's just kind of yeah. like my best team. And then I'll pass it on to Cade, and then we'll kind of make our way around. Um, yeah, so I'm in, I think, four different leagues, two of them with Austin here, uh, two of them on Sleeper, and two of them on ESPN, so it's been kind of interesting going back and forth between the two platforms, uh, but I guess I really would just comment on my Dynasty team. I think I'm kind of the opposite as uh, Austin. I, I'm kind of building towards the future. Uh, I have a lot of younger guys. Um guys that could probably turn out to be something just quickly going through it. Josh Allen, uh, Ramondi Stevenson, AJ Dillon, Mike Evans, AJ Brown, uh, Everett, Smith Schuster, Lazard, and some of my bench guys include Kittle, Buffalo defense, um, Allen Robinson, Car- uh, Edwards Hilaire, Gordon, so building towards, I think, the future for me, even though I got some guys that are doing well this year. Um, and my regular league on this one, I started off pretty well and faltered a little bit here as I've just dealt with bye weeks and stuff. Um, but this is the one I was talking about with that trade with Austin. I have Kurt as my QB, Mozart, Devontae Adams, Michael Pittman, Kelsey, Boyd, James Conner, um and Thielen and I picked up Ronald uh more the other week. Um and I say Burrow as my backup QB uh Nige as well. So I got kind of some depth playing around with it. I think I should start going right towards the right direction again this next week after some of these buys have passed. Um and I think one of the things that have stood out for me though is my defenses. Um actually uh, I picked up the Eagles defense after I think it was like the third week or that second week. I can't remember that one week where they just went off and I bought all in after I watched that one game. I think it was either a Sunday night or a Monday night game. I think it was probably Sunday night and they looked phenomenal. I bought in all and like almost all my teams have the Eagles defenses starting. Um, and I mean, they've been tried and true every week with putting up points and doing well. So um, besides that, other leagues doing okay. Um, one of them not doing great, but yeah, um, getting along through it and having a good year. Jason, would you yes, like yeah. yeah. Oh, well, okay. So I'm in three leagues right now. They're all standard one point PPR. Um, I'm actually in a league with one of my housemates. She was doing pretty bad. And she asked me for fantasy advice. We watched some videos, turned her season around. So just a little, going to take some credit there. Just beat her brother last week. Um, I'm in two other leagues. One of them is a $500 money league. So that one's pretty cool. And then I'm in one with Josh. And funny enough, him and I both actually, we were doing pretty bad. 
And I think I just checked today. We're both projected to finish first and second. This is 12. Mm -hmm. So I turned my season around. Um, I just like am addicted to training. So that was the only way that I could, I could turn my team around, but I'll go through it real quick. I got Jalen Hurst as QB one, or I guess the only QB. I got McCaffrey traded for McCaffrey like an hour before he got traded in real life. So that was actually pretty interesting. Austin helped me with that one. Nice. Um, running back two, got Travis Etienne. Got DeAndre Hopkins as receiver one. Chris Godwin as number two. Um, tight end, got Mark Andrews. And then flex, I got Kenneth Walker. So we're doing really good at running back. And then defense, I got the Broncos. And kicker, I got Justin Tucker. And then just some depth pieces. I got Zeke. He's solid, you know, off the bench. Um Devante, it's Devante, right? Or Dante Foreman? Yeah, Dante Foreman. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess like my other key piece is Justin Fields. And then I would say one thing that I'll say people should do, you know, just kind of a high upside guy, might as well. We all have an IR spot on our roster. Go get Jameson Williams. I don't know if he's coming back this year, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. You know, don't just let it go to waste. He's one of the few guys you can actually put on the IR. I think maybe we'll fall over. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Josh, you want to go next? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm in three leagues as well. Um, my best league is the one I'm in with Jason. Um, and I really haven't done too much with my team. The one big trade I made was with Jason for uh, – I gave him CD – back when Cooper Rush was playing and he was not doing well. He's doing a little better now, but I gave him CD and Clyde and he gave me Tyree Hill. I appreciate that. Yeah, lost that one. <laughs> and, uh, but other than that, I got Aaron Rodgers, which has been not so good. I'm actually going to be looking at getting another quarterback this, uh, this week, probably trade for one. There's not really any good ones in the waivers. Um, and then other than that, I got Josh Jacobs, who's been a roller coaster. Um, Saquon Barkley, who's got Houston this week, so he should go crazy. Um, I lost Jamar Chase. Um, so I got who do I, I got Joshua Palmer in his spot. And then, like I said earlier, Tyreek Hill. I've been switching tight ends pretty much every week. Right now, I got Conklin in, and he disappointed me this week. Um, Alan Lazard, I've been kind of... Uh, he's in my flex now, but I've been putting Mostert in there, and sometimes I've been putting Thielen. But I'm kind of debating on putting Jeff Wilson in there now. And then uh, I got Patriots defense, which has been nice, and Ryan Suckup. Hey, Josh, maybe we can make a trade. I got Justin Fields on my bench. <coughs> yeah, I might have to slide for him. We'll talk after the show. You want Mostert and... Uh, hey, I don't want Mostert. Give Let's me get a trade done right now. Give me, give me Jamar. It's an investment. <laughs> I'm going to need him for the playoffs, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, you also need a QB. Rodgers isn't going to be there. Hey, he, he's going to turn this season around. He's going to start... I, I hope so. I hope so. I think this is some negotiation that is going to occur afterwards. <laughs> But Alex, he'd like to finish it off. Aren't the, aren't the Vikings like seven and two? I don't know if there's seven any turnaround. Seven, seven and one. There's no turning around that season right there for the for the Yeah, Green, Green Bay is done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm in like too many leagues, like five. And then that one league, that's like a thirty two man league, which that's the one I'm the like have my best record in. Actually, other than the guillotine league, that one doesn't count. Um but yeah, I would say that, that I'm five and four in one league. And like this, honestly, like this draft, I was kind of worried. Like I had to go Diggs and Kamara, like at the 11 and 13. No, 11. Yeah, 11, 14 pick. Um, but I ended up putting together a pretty solid team. So on top of like Diggs and Kamara, I've Kenneth Walker, uh, Jalen Hurts, DJ Moore, Gabe Davis. So it kind of sucks having like both the Bills, like one and two guys. But, like, Gabe Davis in the flex doesn't hurt um, if you have digs because then, like, you're getting those points. I mean, the offense runs through those two. Um, a little bit Dawson Knox, but 
regardless. And then Robert Tanyan, which when we talked about him earlier and someone said he was good, I was like, yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> he's this, this man, this man, Austin called him baby Kittle in 2020. I just want to clarify. He was then? I mean, yeah, I told him, he just, no, he's not baby Kittle. Now I don't know what he is, bro. Um, <laughs> and then I kind of just go interchangeable with, with defenses. Like right now I have the Dolphins defense in there, but I'm going to pick up. Like I already have a waiver claim uh, for – who did I pick up? Waivers. Uh, uh, I put a waiver claim in for the uh, for the Titans. They play Denver. So um, – and then Harrison Butker, which has been kind of a disappointment at, at the kicker, which is why any league going forward, I'm I'm not doing kickers and defense. It's it's dumb. Um, I think we went that way with the work one, and well, we have no kicker, no defense. We have three flexes. Yeah, so like it's a yeah, deep like flex that. league, but like it's so it's so much better. You don't have to worry about. A de- your defense getting you negative points or a kicker getting you negative points because they missed two field goals and then go back onto the field. So I got a question for everybody. So everybody name your most disappointing player and your most unexpected player that ended up playing well. On um, that it, team or just at any, any, any team? It can be waivers. It can be who you drafted. It can be a trade. Just one player that – kind of boom that you didn't expect and then one player that disappointed you i'd say biggest disappointment for me i don't know i gotta think about that you want me to start? yeah circle back to me okay I'll, I'll start i'll say my actually i gotta go my biggest disappointment was probably tom brady um no longer on my roster that's how we roll if you play bad you're off the team <laughs> and then i'll say you know my biggest surprise I'm going to go with Travis Etienne because I was pretty disappointed in him because I drafted him, I want to say, round three. And I think it was actually Austin kept telling me, don't trade him. And I was going to trade him, and I kind of only kept him on my bench because nobody wanted him. And I was looking top five back. So this thank you, Austin. Austin. Guy, yeah, seems man, like that he's guy's... a genuinely genius kid, other than Robert oh, yeah. Tunyon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say same thing for me. The Etienne's probably like that biggest surprise. Um, but unfortunately the league that I have him in, I'm one and eight. So it really doesn't even matter. Um, so like that team doesn't put up, like it, it's so bad, bro. Matt Stafford, James Connor, ETN, Gabe Davis, Robert Woods. You can uh, say that whole team's Kurt. a bunch of disappointments. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I mean, like I have Kittle, like Kittle, I, mean, I have Keenan Allen and Jamar Chase. Like that's why that team's so bad because they're both out. <laughs> If, if those two weren't out, then, like, that team actually is, like, okay, that, that could be, like, a 500 team. But no Keenan Allen this year, and then Jamar Chase is out because, you know, he bumped into a table too hard, broke his hip. Is that actually what happened? No, it was a breath. <laughs> <laughs> no, so who did that happen to? And I think it was an NBA player, or maybe it was an NFL player. They ran into a coffee table. Rodgers broke his toe, I think, from doing something like that last year. Who did that? Aaron Rodgers. No. Josh, remember that? And then they said he had like COVID toe. Yeah, he, I think Somebody. he like I think he like fell outside of his house or something. Or something. Yeah, he broke yeah. fractures. So I think it was an NBA player. Somebody like like a coffee table, busted right? Busted their knee on a coffee yeah, table. Yeah, I can't I heard remember about who that. it was. Let me look but, that like, up. I'm like, yeah, that's a way to get a season-ending injury right there. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that – and then I would say my biggest disappointment this year, I man, George Kittle. I had him in, like, three and five leagues, and I just – I sent him out. I kept him in, like, one league, I think. Mm-hmm. I was like, but he's gone. Get him off my roster. I think I turned – in the one league, though, I turned him into Mark Andrews. So – I was able to – I think it was uh, Kittle and Nick Chubb for Mark Andrews, Cortland Sutton, and uh, Ayuk, I think. Okay. So I kind of got a haul for him. Yeah, that was pretty good. For Nick Chubb. So. Dude, uh, I'll tell you, my biggest disappointment has been Najee Harris, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot I mean, trade him to disapp- save my life. How can you be disappointed? <laughs> like Ten plus points a week, man. He's consistent. 
I felt bad because he asked me, he goes, do I draft Devontae or Najee? I said, Najee is a safer option. <laughs> I thought he was a lock to be like a top 10 back. Dude, was the same way. You think so? I mean, he was a top three back last year. I know. Everybody thought he was, he was a top 10 pick. Dude, that's what I was thinking earlier when he said that like he had the 11th and the 14th pick. That was the spot to be this year. Because if you had a top three pick, chances are you got Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, or, you know, yeah. that's why yeah, I didn't like that. that Either one of those teams. So, that team's so surprising at like five and four. Like, I, I've had some bad losses. Like, I've had losses that were like 140 to 138. Like, mm-hmm. out of those four losses. But still, like, to get like, like Diggs and Kamara, like, I was like, kind of like, man, that kind of like, that's okay. I mean, I'm glad I got Diggs at 11, but like, mm-hmm. I was like, man, now I'm picking up a running back that I have no idea if they're even going to do anything for Tucker. And I know. I know some guys. Around, I know some guys around that range who got Diggs and Tyreek. Which Tyreek was on the board still. He didn't go until like the pick after, like second round. Yeah, it, like I went Kamara because I was like, I got to get a back that's going to get some passes. I didn't know what. I mean, no one knew what the Dolphins were going to do this year. I mean, they could be eight and one right now if it wasn't for the fact that Tua like almost died twice. Hey, can we all agree that quarterback and tight end early next year? I don't know. It's got to be the right guy. Tight end early, 100%. Like, taking, yeah. like, like Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews in, like, the second round isn't frowned upon, in my opinion. But um, we had – didn't Josh Allen – Austin, didn't he go in round two, last pick? Round three. He went no, first he went, pick. Oh, did he go first? But still, I mean, that's the, the guys who pick in back-to-back. Yeah. So, yeah, he went round three, first pick. Like, I could not believe that. Because I was, like, trying to eyeball him up late in that at, what, I had, like, 10 pick, I think, in that draft. I'm just not waiting until round seven to get a guy like Stafford or Wilson. Yeah. Honestly, did we li- yeah. did we figure out that that is not the play anymore? It's not no the play anymore. But, uh, I, went, I think I went Stafford in one. Yeah, that one league that I have, Jamar and Keenan, I went Stafford late. and Yeah, I got a quarterback way too late. I picked up Daniel Jones instead. Going up. Going on to the fact of us talking about disappointments and blessings. Um, my biggest disappointment, Michael Thomas. I had him drafted in three leagues. I had him bouncing back, being the number one guy in, in New Orleans. And then, uh, well, he played three weeks pretty solid. And then he's doing Michael Thomas things where he uh, sits on the bench or in free agency for the 14 other weeks of the season. And so... Say I'm disappointed would be an understatement, mm-hmm. but uh, the upside would be Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, mm-hmm. he was a fifth, sixth round pick, and I had him at running back too. And I was really anticipating a running back ten to fifteen, but with his lark performances that he put up in those three weeks. Now, yes, he is a roller coaster guy, but he's consistently like a ten point back. Who Jacobs? Not, yeah, yeah, Josh Jacobs. Yeah, bro. I mean. If you go off of just like, I mean, his last, what, two weeks were pretty disappointing, but he only saw 55% of snaps and 69% of snaps. Yeah. Where in the three weeks prior to that, he saw 80% of snaps or more. Yeah. And like what, his attempts, his, his rushing attempts over the last two games have literally been 10 and 17, where he went 28, 21, 20. What like I'm, he's not like, getting, he's not getting the opportunities. If he gets the opportunities, I mean, he's already, what, seven? Yeah. Number seven back in the league. Vegas, Josh, did you, did Vegas you get has, your what were you saying? Oh, I said, Josh, did you ever say who your surprise guy was? Was it Saquon, or did you not say? Oh, it? yeah, I that's who I would say. Yeah, oh. I never said it, but Saquon, I mean, I knew if he could stay healthy, he'd be good, but you know, it's just surprised me that he has stayed healthy and has been good. So yeah, back back here. <laughs> and I got Saquon pretty late. Let me check. I feel like everybody got him. Like, yeah, I got him thirty second overall, third round. Wow. What about you, kid? Um, I think one of the biggest disappointments is kind of already said. So I'll probably just say two. But was Najee Harris? I took him in a lot of the leagues. I think three out of the four leagues, and was super high on him. I thought it'd be another great year, top five or running back. I was. I was ready to go to ride the the Harris train. I mean, I'm a Steelers fan too, so that was I was all about it. I was all in, and I think he's burned me pretty bad in a lot of my leagues. Um, 
But I think another one for me that has been a disappointment is <laughs> even though he's been a little steady, I, I still think Russell Wilson has been an absolute disappointment. Um, and especially for me, I think I took him really early in one of my leagues. Um, and because uh, a couple quarterbacks are starting to fly off the board, and I was like, I was I was ready to go to the Russell Wilson train, and he's completely let me down. He's, I think, in my opinion, he's been a really bad quarterback, and he's still. I mean, he puts up 14 points, so you can't complain too much. But he's been a disappointment in a, in my eyes. Um, I think the biggest surprise for me. Um, I'm going to have to go with, I think I'm going to have to go with Ramondre Stevenson. I think a lot of people are a little unsure with what was going to happen there in New England with Damian Harris and Stevenson. And, um, I think it's been pretty clear. I mean, Damian Harris has been hurt, so it's been the Stevenson show, but, um, I think he's just going to continue to be their number one and Damian Harris will probably have seven days. So, agreed. Agreed. what's that? Oh, I said I agree. Yeah, he was solid. solid. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Stevenson has been looking really good and he's just been a consistent producer of points fantasy wise. And yeah. uh, I don't think he he's uh, going to slow down really either. I think they're going to give him his, his work. So. Hey, real quick, Austin, what was that food that you're eating that you tried to sneak? So, uh, <laughs> this is an Ohio special. We call this Bibi Bop. And so, you got some now, Bibi Bop there? Yeah, so this is an empty bowl. But beforehand, it was filled with rice, potatoes, black beans, eggs, cheese, corn, and a bunch of steak. And Sounds so, like a lot of protein. <laughs> it was just beautiful. Sounds like you'll be busy after the show. Huh? Sounds like you might be busy after the show. I will be. I will be <laughs> occupied in a room right down that hallway. Not too long. But um, I feel like we talked briefly about the guillotine league with me and Alex. But if you guys are able to run a guillotine league, I'm thinking that we should run a guillotine league between the people who we're doing the show with and then get a couple more people in on it next year. Because it's, yeah. it's a really cool idea. And it really, mm -hmm. it really forces you to be engaged. And if we're all in the same league, I feel like it's going to make it an even cooler concept. And so, you want to explain what a guillotine league is? Because I know a lot of people are unfamiliar. Yeah. So, uh, I'll kind of bounce back and forth with me and Alex since we're both the ones familiar with it. And so, <laughs> depending on how many people are in your actual league, you can have up, you can have 12, 16. The like optimal number for it is seventeen. Unfortunately, sleeper is like the only like is like the only like fantasy like platform like I think you can really do it on, and you have to set it to an even number. So we did sixteen um, teams, and like basically like everybody like I'll let Austin take like over, but like it basically like someone gets eliminated every week, and then the last week is like a two week playoff between the top two teams yeah so to kind of continue off of that so it's a normal drafting strategy you go in but your goal is like you have to anticipate so what we kind of didn't talk about we'll talk about the draft and then we'll talk about the faab the fantasy al allocated like allowance money and so you'll draft normally and then week one you have matchups and whoever performs the worst through that week they get cut out the league kind of like a guillotine chopping throw and so your team's done and your whole team gets put up on the waiver wires and so discussing the fantasy balance we go into the league with a hundred dollars each and so if you get cut out week one your money is like basically in the void you don't get to use it but for everybody else you get to bid on their players and so like for our league i think austin eckler went up week one because he had a poor performance yeah. And so he was he, claimed on waivers like two times, I think. Yeah. Or three times. But like in those initial <laughs> weeks, for you to get it with a bunch of people having $100, you have to bid nearly more than half of your allocated yeah. money. He went for 51 week, like week one. Yeah. Jeez. And so you Did basically you throw away. What'd you say? You get 200, right? 100. 100. Yeah. Oh, 
We are filming. Jeez. Yeah. Is it a hundred every week or is it just no, hundred for general. the entire season? Uh huh. Wow. That's gotta last you. <laughs> when I'm on guard, yeah, yeah. If every, you got a lot of injuries, you're done. Dude. Mm-hmm. Every week you get five extra dollars if you're the highest point getter. Okay. So like, it, there's it, it incentivizes like trying to be the best team. Like, mm-hmm. hey, spend that fab money, that free agent acquisition budget, because you have to you, – there's there's a reason to be the highest scoring team. Like, instead of just trying to get by every single week, right. um, there's a reason to be – which, it, it, I mean, it comes down to – like, it, that ends up being, like, you know, the Achilles heel right there because, like, Griff, like, went heavy, uh, one of the guys in the league, and he was flush out of cash, I think, like, three weeks into it, and mm-hmm. he's, like – bottom to their second or third to last place every single week he's just scraping by mm-hmm. uh, it's impressive though <laughs> and who's in that league is alex and austin yeah yeah and how are you guys doing in it i know austin you're doing well right uh i'm the number one point getting team i think austin really? is number three okay I'm number two no bro i think ryan's got you i don't think so uh, I'm going Let's to double check right that now. I'm pulling it up. Standings. I mean, you guys, have, you guys have a pot for that one? Yeah, it's twenty dollars each. Yeah, it's twenty dollars <laughs> each, but we're switching it up next year. Um, we're gonna go to where whatever money you spend in free agency, you have to put that in the pot. Wow. Yeah. That's so. Good. That yeah, that pot's gonna be lucrative. Yeah. Hey, but next year, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, that'll give you some incentive not to go too crazy in the yeah. waivers. But yeah, I yeah, know you're right. RC does yeah. have me. It's you, yeah, RC. He's got and you me. by 17. I've got him by 113. Yeah. So, um, and I also have the most money left as well. So, mm-hmm. your boy has been playing GM pretty well. <laughs> playing GM. I was. I mean, dude. Yeah, the team I got. You like. Uh, you like Joe Burr, Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Amari Cooper. Tyreek Hill, Dallas Goddard, Najee Harris. And yeah, soon- I, want to, I want to say Najee Flex. Soon to be Nicholas Jamal Chubb tomorrow. Once yeah. waivers clear at 12.05. Yeah, let me I tell mean, you. Talk about a squad right there. And still have the most money left in the fab. Yeah. Let me tell you, so- the guillotine league. If there's a twelve oh five on any day of the I mean, any day of the week that gets me hyped, it's a Wednesday at twelve oh five in the middle of fucking right when my class starts. I'm ecstatic. I'm ready I'm to on see. my I'm at work. I'm sitting on my phone just waiting for it to update and yeah. say who got who. Yeah. For how much? Because you don't you can't see what people are bidding for it. So you're oh, doing okay. blind bids. So like right now, like I I have thirty one dollars left in um in fab. The next most is what Scott at fifteen. 15. Yeah. yeah. So like right now, I know that I only have to bid sixteen dollars to get Nick Chubb. So like gotcha. it's like kind of like that first couple of weeks when everyone has a hundred, you don't know what people are going for, and like mm-hmm. that that's when like I was like when I got Derrick Henry, I was like, like you kind of have to have like a tier list in your head, like how much am I willing to spend on each player, like where do they fall? Yeah, like a cap. Yeah, I went like I was like, okay, I think Derrick Henry through the first two weeks he put up goose eggs practically. I was like, let me throw forty on him and see if I get him. I think the next closest bid was like thirty eight dollars. I was like, wow, I can't believe I got him for forty. I honestly thought I wasn't gonna get him because I'm like, I can't believe people are actually like saying he's washed and like you know he's not gonna produce when since then that man's been on a tear. I mean, he's put up twenty five or more every week or twenty three or more every week except for against indianapolis which he put 16 point data so like oh. he's been he's man's been on tear and he's seeing less than 75 percent of the snaps too like he's his production is through the roof mm-hmm. they're wow. kind of just running the ball though i mean he's getting like 30 carries a game which i knew that was going to happen like, eventually like he, he got 13 carries week two and he put up 8.5 like that's not how tennessee wins games which they should have won the other day but and I know we want to talk about this earlier, or Austin and I talked about it a bit, but who are your guys' two players? Who is your Joe Mixon of the week, your star, and then who is your sleeper? Oh, yeah. Coming up this next week. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
it's gonna sound so biased, but my Joe Mixon of this week, Justin Fields. I'm <laughs> starting him this week. He's going to be the guy to put up a 30 piece against the Lions. Their defense just looks atrocious. And like I just don't see a reason to not start him. Saquon Barkley's another guy that because I just don't want to sound repetitive. He's versing the Texans. Mm-hmm. And if we all watch what Derrick Henry baptized that whole roster on defense, the Texans have the worst rushing defense in football, hands down. Take Saquon. That's a guy. Fandle, whatever you can get that man, he's going to be your guy this week. And who's your uh, sleeper? Is it Justin? Who's my sleeper? Yeah, because I say Justin's kind of established. You could you could say like Justin, but um, my sleeper this week. Let me look at matchups, and I'm gonna have to kind of take a little bit of a second on that. I got mine. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. My boy Amon Ross St. Brown. Ooh. He's playing. He's going up against his brother. You know, yeah. like big bro. Yeah, big bro. So I feel like bro. I feel like I feel like he's gonna have a game, especially with how bad. I mean, no offense, but how bad the Bears defense is. I mean, is that your star or your sleeper? That's my sleeper. I don't think he's, okay. he's okay. like number one, but I mean, he's yeah. probably projected like fifteen. He'll put up like twenty-five. He'll do something. He'll do something solid. Um, okay. Star though, Nicholas Jamal Chubb. I guess uh, Miami defense. I guess that Miami defense. I see that. Okay, Josh, who wants to go next? Or oh, I can go. Oh uh, yeah, you go first. Okay, so my star of the week is going to be Christian McCaffrey. I think you know after that man did it all, he did a threw a touchdown, he caught a touchdown, he ran one in. Um, Going against our Chargers defense, I think he's going to have a big week. And I think they're just going to implement him more and more. And don't be surprised when he drops 40. And then my sleeper of the week, let me check real quick. Oh, wait, he's actually on a bye. I was going to say Devin Duvernay, but he's on a bye. Um, Just in general, I think he's a guy that's kind of on the rise and doesn't get a lot of notoriety. So I definitely keep an eye on him. But my... Sleeper of the week. I'm gonna go with let's go Greg Dulwich. Tight end from Denver. I think he's gonna keep, you know, he's been putting up twelve. I think he's put up twelve the last like three weeks or around that range. Um, I think this is a week that he gets a big one, maybe twenty two. Not to interject again, but I feel like I wasn't able to say my sleeper. My sleeper is gonna be Jeff Wilson. I think Miami. we talked about him earlier. He and Mike McDaniels are going to be on the same wavelength, and I think he's going to get at least 10 to 15 points. I don't think he's going to be a completely massive producer, but I think he's going to be a guy to look, sought after this weekend. And he's going up against a defense that seems incompetent when it go, comes to stopping the run. So he could have an Austin Eckler-esque day against <laughs> us. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd say... Um... I say I was gonna go. My star was gonna be McCaffrey as well, um, but I guess I'll choose somebody different just for the fun of it. I think Kelsey will be the star of the week. Um, it's a lot of mouths to feed, but they're playing Jacksonville. I think I think Kelsey will be a problem for Jacksonville. Um, he's still gonna get his, I think, eight to ten receptions for a hundred yards and. Um, you know, if he can get some touchdowns in there, I think he's he's going to be the star of the week. Um, for a sleeper, I'm I'm torn between two people. I'm I'm going to choose one, and I'm going to go with the Chicago offense with Chase Claypool. Um, oh. I think week one, this after that trade for them, I think he just needed to get his feet wet and kind of just get under the same understanding for that offense. And I think he also got. His production that last this last week got taken away from Justin Fields running all over the place. Um, I think hopefully Justin will sit in the pocket a little bit longer. And against Detroit, I think there's going to be a lot of passing opportunities for Claypool to be the sleeper of the week. What type of numbers are we talking? Ten catches, 120, two touchdowns. I think he's going to get eight catches, um, and if he can break away for a 40, 50 yard touchdown catch i mean it'll be sitting nice for a nice 20 to 25 point week solid uh josh are you up uh yeah so uh, i was gonna say for my for like my star i was gonna say saquon as well 
but uh, I'll say someone different too. And I said it at the beginning of the stream was uh, Cordell Patterson. Okay. I think, I don't know, it just depends on his touches, but Carolina's got the, I think it says here on ESPN, 30th ranked uh, running defense. And if they give him a lot of touches, I think, I don't see why he can't get 20, 30 points. Um, and for my sleeper, I'm probably going to have to go, and I don't know if he, you know, he's been playing good recently, um, but McCall Hardman, I think that he's going to, he's going to be pretty good against the Jack, uh, the Jaguars. Yeah, I like it. I love that. I think McCall is one of those guys, you, hard to predict, kind of like Taysom Hill. Mm -hmm. Taysom Hill is a man of... You really have to hope Andy Dalton gets injured because if he is, that is the most prime tight end pickup you can have with him being your starting quarterback. But um, kind of segueing away from that, I'm thinking we should kind of wrap this up a little bit. We've kind of been talking for around an hour, hour and a half, and I feel like we should kind of set the stage for next week. So next week I'm thinking we should primarily start with kind of waiver wires talk about or we'll wrap up in the previous week talking about people we should be expecting good return for in waiver wires i kind of want to start the uh the boom bust we can actually we'll we'll start boom bust next week same as waiver wire competition between us between us and then uh beyond that it's really just going to be predictions kind of predicting what we can do the best or what teams can do the best and what we can do possibly trade wise, maybe throw out like possible trades, possible waiver pickups, stuff along that lines. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking for the following weeks. Do you guys have any other suggestion thoughts? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I was just going to say, yeah. question, like of question of the week. Does Alex look like Baker? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Baker Mayfield? Yeah, a little bit. I hate that. No, it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you. And hey, music can be on I, I will say that was uh, that was the inspiration for my dog's name. So, okay. of which, hey, where are you at? Come here. <laughs> Come here. No, you don't want to get up. You tired? Okay, don't wink at me. That's weird. All right. Were you sad hey, to see Baker go as a Browns fan? Uh, yes. Because that man, uh, I think he reinvigorated the uh, he reinvigorated the franchise. Yeah, like he brought it was, back to life. Yeah, I, I mean, like I argue this a lot with uh, a fellow coworker who's a Bills fan um, about who's the best like fran like fan base in the NFL. I genuinely think it's the Browns, just because when we were zero and six and one and fifteen, every game was still a sellout. Like, yeah, y'all maintain like great like, attendance. Always. Exactly. Like, and I think attendance wise, I think we've, I think the stat is we're 99.6% capacity over the last two decades. Wow. And yeah. the next best is the Bills. They're 99.2. And then there's like a drop off to, I can't remember who it is, but they're like 97.8. So, like, it is like 1A and 1B, but like, in my opinion, like, we're the, the most resilient and it was yeah. nice to see somebody come in and kind of reignite that flame and yeah kind of light a fire, fire under that franchise's ass so yeah. that was that's why like, i was sad to see him go do i know that his ceiling is very low his ceiling's very low and his floor is very high like he is like you're not gonna get anything terrible from him his kid on steroids huh I said his case Keenum on steroids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it, it would have been nice to see him kind of have a higher ceiling, but, I mean, you knew what he was coming into the league. He's an undersized quarterback, and honestly, like, I think that's, especially after Kyler Murray starting to, like, not really work out now, I don't think they're – I think it kind of is out the door, those undersized QBs, anybody under six foot one. So, which is – you know, not short. It's like Tower, short you. kings. <laughs> I will say, going going towards the um, kind of away from the mo most loyal fan base, but the most loyal fan, I got to give it up to Austin. That <laughs> man went through hell because of my man Aaron Rodgers and Josh's. And that dude, every time 
he just he still supports them. He still goes to their opener every year in Chicago. And um, I will say, even after they picked Mitch over Mahomes and Watson, he stuck by him. So props to you, Austin. And I respect it. Yeah, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm the most loyal fan in that regards, but I will say that um, about <laughs> I will say that when somebody says that they own you from a northern organization, the amount of pain that shoots through your own heart, knowing that there's some truth to it, really does hurt. But no, I can't sit here. And Sorry, say, some truth to it. <laughs> there's a lot of truth to it, but. <laughs> hundred percent truth. No, it's like ninety. It's like a high ninety. Ninety nine point nine repeating. Yeah, it's like ninety percent. Which uh, game was more painful when BJ Raji got that pick six, or the Hail Mary to Cobb to go to the playoffs? So I'm actually gonna deny both of those. I'm gonna go to the 2018, 2018 playoffs versus the Philadelphia Eagles, where a gentleman named Cody Parkey kicked a field goal and it happened to hit not once but sorry twice. do you mean cleveland browns legend cody parkey i mean chicago bears <laughs> disappointment cody parkey who I, I i think you meant cleveland browns legend no i did not but <laughs> whatever you think but yes so um nest that was the most tragic i don't think i felt that level of pain in my life I don't even think you could shoot a gun through my chest and I'd feel as much pain as I did. <laughs> I think I texted you after two and I said, did you see that? Yeah, no, I saw that. I threw a beanie, a record. You you remember how we were talking about that flag, Cade, that was thrown 25 yards yesterday? Mm-hmm. I think I threw the beanie twice as far as that ref did. That beanie could have traveled a football field's length from how hard I threw that after that <laughs> loss. And I, I, I called it. Like, huh? What team do you like, kid? Steelers. Steelers? Yeah. Steelers fan. Yeah, are you, or, or beef in. Are you big on picket or no? Uh, you big on small hands? I think it's too early. I think it's too early to say for sure. Um, I think he's got potential, though. I mean, he was slinging it at Pitt, so um, I think he's got a potential to th- throw the ball well. Um, I just think he needs to I mean, settle in and maybe get some some other guys around him or whatever mm-hmm. and get that maybe some pressure off of him in a way too i think there's a lot of pressure in a way for him to yeah. solve the steelers problems but it might take some time but he's, i think yeah i think he'll be turned he's okay. got a lot of pieces around him yeah. good head coach and he's, got, he's got the demeanor of a good quarterback you know yeah i feel like you can almost you almost know just by the way they carry themselves and they talk if they're going to be good you yeah. know, and I, I just I feel like I I believe in Kenny Pig. Yeah, I like him. Good draft pick. The way he walked out of that last uh, interview after the game, mm-hmm. I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I also like George Pickens, NFL young boy. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was that dog. was one hell of a catch he made. Yeah, I wish the Packers would have picked him up. Yeah, I picked Christian Watson who gets hurt. Every game. <laughs> that man is made of glass. Glass chandelier. Well, he's got bricks for hands, too. Don't forget that 70-yard bomb he dropped in week oh, one. Dude, oh, I still dude, believe our season like, would be very different. Dude, look, 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 that one drop. Devontae would have caught it. He probably would have. But he's sitting in disappointment in Oakland, too. So, See, I think, I think what they should do is they should just both agree that they were morons and come back together. <laughs> Reset button. Yeah. Sounds like a Packers fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, gentlemen. Oh yeah, we're off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was All right, a pleasure. Yeah. Y'all be easy. You guys too. Y'all make sure to fantasy football and show. Yes, sir. <laughs>